You're not a legendary chef. You're just a man with a lot of lemon pepper. How much hypocrisy can people possibly adore? But ain't nobody working on a cure, my young boy. Welcome everybody, coming back to you live once again through the power of an unactive Windows installation. And now there's this stupid watermark in the bottom right hand of my screen that says activate Windows. Go to settings to activate Windows, even though it's practically the same computer that I just had. Only kind of not, only kind of not, a uh, yeah, little bit not. Oh, it should be activated though, because it's essentially the same computer. I gotta do freaking, gotta jerry rig my computer to get it working, kind of. Not really, not as bad as the past week anyway. Huh. Everybody's out of town. Everybody used to be out of town. What do you know? Hmm. It's almost Sunday morning. Which Sunday morning is best Sunday morning? I'll tell you which Sunday morning is best Sunday morning. I woke up after a weekend of camping at a farm and I was in charge of cooking. Actually, no, I was in charge of cleaning. That makes more sense. No, I was in charge of cooking. No, because I was in charge of cooking, yes. And we decided to make eggs. And they were in this little... The eggs were in the in the carton eggs. They were the liquid eggs, you know? The stupid... They looked like a milk carton, but they were full of, like, the egg yolk, and you just poured it into the pan, and that's absolutely nasty. And it just scrambles, and you have to scramble them, and it's just fine for mass cooking of eggs, but... Oh, goodness, you don't want to taste that. I put salt in my eggs anyway. That's kind of a cardinal rule. You just always put salt in your eggs. It's cardinal rule to never put salt on anything before you try it because it's an insult to cook. Um, except for scrambled eggs. Because scrambled eggs have a uh, very bad flavor unless you add salt, which balances out the flavor. Not too much salt, though. Just the right amount. After 15 years of eating eggs, you kind of get an, uh, a notice of or a feel or an intuition of how much salt you put on your eggs. There's no specific amount that you ha uh, must use. Anybody, anyway, anybody, anyway, anyway, anybody, uh, Sunday morning, I'm cooking eggs out of the stupid carton. Not out of the carton, I poured the carton into the pan. I mean, seriously. And it was smoking and it was bad tasting eggs, but it didn't really matter because it was cold. It was a cold May morning, early May. It was dew on the ground, making my shoes all soaked, and we were cooking eggs, and I finished the eggs, and I look around, and there's just a bunch of 6th graders lined up with their plates out in front of me, like, feed me, feed us, feed us, like a baby, and so I do, and I get my eggs, I, I hand them all eggs, none of them say please, just fine. I just kind of wanted my eggs anyway. So I was hungry because I'm still a hungry boy. And breakfast, and I get my eggs. I sit down. I go, Where's the salt? Where's the salt? And I look around. And I'm about to assault somebody because there's no salt on the table. And so I look around. There's no salt. Well, apparently it rained last night. That's why my shoes are soaked, not just because it's dew. And the salt was out on the picnic table outside. Uh, it, with rain. So I go out. I go out and get the. I get. I get the salt. It's one of those generic salt shakers, you know, that you you twist the, you kind of twist the, the top a little bit. It's like a rotating disc a little bit, and it changes if you want to sprinkle, if you want to just pour the salt in, if you want to completely close it off, and whatever. I get the salt. I look at it and I just shake it down on, on on my eggs. Just like I'm. I'm just want salt. Okay. No salt comes out, okay? I shake it harder, no salt comes out. Okay, maybe like two grains, two grains of salt, two kernels of salt come out, it, no no salt, okay? On my eggs, and I, I get I get mad, I get pissed. I look at it, I look inside, and it's like, it's kind of like how, um, it's like how sand, how sand works, you know? You get it wet and it sticks together, you know? You dig further in the beach and it sticks together and you can make a clump and you can just... Make like a sandball and chuck it at people, you know? It's like a sandball. It's kind of like the same thing with uh, with salt. It just sticks together when it gets wet. Same with a lot of things like hair. It just sticks together when it gets wet and it's disgusting. Anyway, I have my eggs and it's 
all or not not my eggs. Well, I do have my eggs, but I have my salt, and it's all stuck together in there. So I'm, I look around in there and try to poke it out with a fork. And I look to my boy, my boy Chuck, and go, Chuck, can you help me? He goes, Oh, what the heck, Ben? What did you do now? So then I I hand him the salt. And it's like, can you fix this? And he takes his, he goes, All right, fine. He picks it, in, it goes in his pocket and picks out a. He picks out a uh, useful jackknife or something. And he starts stabbing the top of it. Just stab, 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 stab. Then he, then he starts to get a little smart. And he twists the top so it goes in the pour, the pour shaker. So he goes, he does a little more stabbing. Stab, 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 stab. And I'm just staring at my eggs like, can I just eat my eggs already? And he's like, there you go, Ben. I fixed it. It works. So he gives it to me. And I, I kind of assume Chuck is a smart fellow. So I just kind of intuitively just kind of like dump my just start shaking my salt on my eggs like i just i just want to eat my eggs with salt and apparently uh he just a big pile of salt just lands on my eggs and i i look at the i i look dumbfoundedly at my eggs like what just happened i just look in in the snout of the salt shaker or something or the end whatever and he didn't change it back to sprinkle he only held it at a pour so now i have a whole pile of salt in the middle of my eggs. I'm not recooking my eggs. I'm not doing anything else. I just want to eat my eggs because I'm hungry. Except there's a big pile of salt in the middle of my eggs. All the rest of the trip on the way home. Nobody talked to me. Except if they went if they asked them one question. Ben, are you still salty about your eggs? That was three years ago. I still get crap for that. The women of the church. The women of the church. I'm a working man now. Working man. Doing stuff for working man. Work in a warehouse. I'm not going to give too specifics about my job. But I work in a warehouse. Um, after every day, I go... I go toward the, the main part. There's two buildings. A uh, warehouse and a main lab. I go to the main lab after every day. Give myself a Tootsie Pop. By the way, blow pops are stupid. Why do they exist? Tootsie Pops are way better. Because nobody wants to l eat the inside of a lollipop and then, oh, there's this crappy piece of gum in there that I can't really eat. So then part of the part of the candy part is ruined because it's stuck to this gum, but I can't swallow the gum. Anyway, at least with Tootsie Pop, you can just swallow the whole thing. You just kind of destroy your teeth a little bit. I don't know if it destroys your teeth, but you kind of like gnaw the, not gnaw, but like pull the, the candy part off the stick and you throw the stick when you just got this like, this gob, this like uh, jawbreaker or something that's really good. Anyway, um, and after, after every day I go toward the main lab where the offices are and a lot of production stuff is, get my raspberry iced tea. It's just a raspberry tea. It's just cold. And my bag of sun chips. And I walk through the halls for the break room to wait uh, for my ride. And uh, I'm walking through marketing. And this one lady looks at me. She's about, uh, I don't know, 35 to 45. And he looks me dead in the eye and says, Hey, young friend. Is that supposed to happen? Is that how people interact with each other? I don't even know her. And she just looks me in the eye and says, Hey, young friend. Do I call her, Hey, old person hi old person hi old stranger hey old stranger what, what am i supposed to how am i how am i supposed to react to that you know how am i i i, I don't know how i reacted i think i just smiled and made a noise when in doubt i just kind of make a noise with, yeah 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 huh kind of make a noise that mimics their noise that they make so if it's like an upbeat like hey eyes and hmm hi you know and hopefully the background noise and all the the clanking of people yelling and people stomping their feet and clapping their hands muffles out the articulation of the uh. so i i don't know uh, no, of the, the church. church the women of, of the church, church. six happy places in my life Okay, six happy physical places in my life. I mean, I can get through six happy mentally places in my life uh, through uh, various form forms of media like music or YouTube or movies or 
certain books. Um, but yeah, I have, I have six uh, physical happy places that I go and I decide to be happy. Well, not decide to be happy. It just happens to be happy uh, when I go there. Um, just for the environment, uh, what it means, what it, what it is, and everything in between. Um, so yeah, I guess if you want to see it that way. Um, so six physical happy places. Um, some of uh, they're all very dear to me. Uh, the one of them, uh, I think it's number three. Number three, yeah, number three. Um, number three is Micro Center. Um, that might surprise a lot of you because Micro Center is often known as my number one happy place. Uh, no, that is a different place. Number one and number two are different places. I forget what number, number two is. But I know that Micro Center is number three. Maybe even number four. Maybe number four. It was number four in the middle of the story after... Anyway. Anyway, anyway uh, this, this next part uh, is very... Very interesting, I guess. Um, I would not want to go through it again. I'm glad it happened, but I don't want to go through it again, as I mentioned. Um, there's some experiences where it's like, they're interesting experiences, but you don't want to go through them again. Um, and of course, there's experiences where it's like, yeah, I'd like to go through again because it was enjoyable, it was interesting, and it meant a lot in my life. Well, this one means a lot in my life, but I don't want to go through it again. Um, especially because it happened in my number three happy place. Um, now I have to look at the ground every time I walk into this plate, walk into Micro Center because I uh, avoid contact with the different salesmen that uh, have helped me that I, I don't know, that just helped me and I don't want to, their help again because then they'll see me, oh, I probably need help again, which I know what I'm going in, in there for. Anyway, I don't need any help. I can draw the whole diagram of Micro Center by memory uh, pretty exactly. In fact, I've done that for psychology, um, just to, for the psychology of the store and why not go to a store or why go to a, why do a project on something I don't need to leave the house for. And that probably nobody else has done or probably some very select few strange 12th graders for their psychology project. Anyway. Um, okay. So the premise of the story, let's say end of June, it was end of June, Monday, it was the very earliest. Uh, we'll set the story up. Uh, my computer, if you don't understand any of this, uh, I'll probably, I'll either try to water it down after I give the raw information or try to Google it or something. Um, so here you go. Uh, my computer on Monday, the last Monday of June, uh, was a, I guess, CP motherboard uh, RAM was an 83 or FX 8320E, um, which is a, the weakest A core you could probably buy on the market back then, back in 2015, and it was already a three-year-old CPU back then, so it was it was launched in, or the architecture was launched in 2012. I was using eight core, which was eight cores were was okay for a lot of things, uh, except for a lot of web browsing. It only uses one core, or one or two cores. So it's like it's only using one or two weak cores that it could have been. Anyway. Uh, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM. It was basic DDR3 RAM, nothing special. Um, and a really cheap ASRock board, or motherboard, which um, CPU is pretty much the brain for computer. Motherboard ties everything together, and RAM is like a like a space that gives stuff to work on. Um, so so there we go. So I'm using a six year old platform. Uh, with another six-year-old platform with a really cheap six-year-old motherboard. Um, so yeah, it's it was pretty old. It was due for an upgrade because everything was... A lot of things were getting sluggish and stuff and stuff that I needed. I had a job. So it was like the first thing I was going to pull the trigger on and use until, the I, I guess, for five years, I guess. I don't know how often I'd need to upgrade a CPU. Um, but this will, this should last me like five years. So it was a good investment. Uh, for someone who's going into computer science when in college um, and who does application development on the side also. So it was a worthwhile uh, bill or worthwhile thing to upgrade to Ryzen. It was going to happen sometime or sooner or later. And I don't want to have problems a week before school is going to start because I have a billion other things to do before moving into college for the first day of college in my entire life. 
instead of trying to fix my la- fix my desktop. So Ryzen is the new platform that came out. I guess the entirety of Ryzen came out last year. This version of Ryzen I'm upgrading to came out like two months ago. So it's a upgrading to mid range. So that was Monday. Tuesday I receive a motherboard. Well, right in the middle of a CS:GO match because it's like my stress, my unstressor, um, just kind of mindlessly playing CS:GO. In the middle of a CS:GO match, I I get it at like 9:30 at night. He comes over, comes over to my house uh, and just drops the motherboard off. And he's like, "I'm leaving for a couple weeks. Just keep uh, take the motherboard. Don't pay me yet. Make sure it works. Uh, see you." And I'm like, "Good job or thank you and whatever." bunch of those small talk stuff and we go i go back upstairs go back to my match whatever and i get excited about my the motherboard i guess it's kind of mine now but i didn't pay for it yet anyway uh next day on wednesday uh we actually go to micro center my mother and i um go over uh i get my cpu uh cpu is a ryzen 2600 uh, non overclocked because I can save 30 bucks and just overclock it myself because it's the, the exact same thing. Only I just go in the motherboard and just hit the up arrow until it hits a uh, voltage or like a clock speed that's actually stable. Whatever. Um, I'm not, I can, I mean, I'll overclock, but I'm not going to drastically overclock it, like tinker with the voltage yet. Um, but it, I mean, I can save 30 bucks by doing that. Um, then I get some RAM. It's some Corsair Vengeance, uh, three thousand megahertz RAM. Um, if you're at all interested, so yeah, good thing. Go home, put it together. Well, I've, I guess I get everything downstairs, put it on the test bench like you like a test bed like you're supposed to, which is just the motherboard box. Get it on there. Uh, get everything set up. Way too excited. Uh, can't use my CPU cooler because it doesn't actually fit on to it somehow doesn't fit with the blocks um or the the back block doesn't fit with the thing so i have to use the stock cooler which is fine because the ryzen stock cooler is fine enough for what i need it for um i guess it's a heck of a lot better than the tornado uh sounding old amd stock cooler that i had for a week not a week no i had it for like half a month until i just kind of like okay i'm spending on a decent cpu cooler that didn't sound like a jet was taking off every time I turn on my computer. Um, so yeah, so then we set up, get everything up, uh, turns on, but it doesn't post. What a posting means is that when you initially turn on the computer, let's say you like a laptop or a desktop or any kind of computer, um, usually just uh, desktop type computers like desktops and laptops um, that are not mobile like a tablet or a phone or even like a TV. Um, TVs aren't mobile, but they're low-powered, I guess. Um, pretty much every motherboard has software inside of the motherboard that um, called a BIOS that um, when your computer first starts up, it's the first thing that starts up and gets everything running. So then your a little bit more upper-level OS operating system can um, can boot up and work like it's supposed to. And I, when you know your all your components are working, uh, your motherboard uh, will flash up a like a blank like a title screen almost under your monitor and make sure it's uh, just to make sure all the components are running and that your everything it works like it's supposed to. And usually it'll say the the name brand of the motherboard, so like ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, whatever. Um, if you have a laptop, it'll generally show um, the name. The name of the laptop maker so i guess it like even asus um toshiba uh samsung whatever and will initially show that up so then it knows that hey it's up and running uh all your core components are up and running so it should work so i turn on my computer uh that's already on sprawl on test bed whatever makeshift test bed that i made in the kitchen and doesn't work which is ex- kind of expected uh, because uh, the motherboard uh, was an older motherboard, kind of. Um, turns out this new series of uh, Ryzen CPUs, the 20,000 series, um, needs an, a BIOS upgrade to work with uh, 
or the motherboard needs a BIOS upgrade to work with the newer CPUs, uh, with that chipset, um, which the chipset was B350M, no, just B350, I don't know why I keep saying M, uh, it just needs upgrade because of some Infinity Fabric, whatever kind of stuff. It just needs a BIOS upgrade. Um, so I was hoping there was a BIOS upgrade. Uh, no, that didn't work. Uh, fine. I tried to different ways to do BIOS upgrade. Uh, yeah, upgrade like um, or BIOS update. Like tried it with no CPU in the motherboard because actually some motherboards can run up uh, with no CPU, but it won't go into like an operating system. Uh, tried it with no RAM. Uh, turns out, no, that doesn't work. Okay, doesn't work. I spent about three hours working on that on on uh, actually Thursday night because I didn't do it on Wednesday night when I brought my components because next day I had orientation and it was already 9.30 at night. Uh, college orientation on Thursday. So this is all on Thursday. I'm beat. I go to, I go to bed uh, kind of stressed out. It's like, okay, go to work next day, come back from work. Uh, try it again. Uh, spend like three more hours on it. Uh, no. Still doesn't work. Nothing works. So it's like, okay. Probably should go back to Micro Center. See if they can... If I can spend 15 bucks on... Have them like update the BIOS with an older CPU in. And have them just update the BIOS and have it work. Great. Okay. So... And then Saturday morning comes along. I... Again, Saturday morning, uh, I asked a, a buddy down the street, can I borrow your RAM? Because he has a Ryzen system too, but I don't want to have him take his take out a CPU just to put in my motherboard and have it update the BIOS. Uh, so I'm thinking, okay, I can borrow like a stick of RAM just to make sure it isn't the RAM that's uh, conflicting it from maybe even booting up. Um, it's like, okay. Ask him, he hands over a stick of RAM uh, graciously. Uh, for the day, because he doesn't really need it. He's gone for most of the day anyway, so uh, I th I thank him. Uh, but uh, that doesn't work at all. So then my mother and I go back over to Micro Center um, to uh, to the guy, and he uh, they they test it, and they uh, they try to we try to update the BIOS at the Micro Center, hang around there for about half an hour. They call back saying, uh, hey, uh, it's not any of the components except for the motherboard, which is dead. Um, which is weird because the motherboard lights up when you power it on, but it doesn't post. Uh, turns out they did a whole bunch of different CPUs and a whole bunch of RAM configurations with stuff that they know works. Um, the motherboard apparently doesn't work. Okay. Um, I mean, not really any loss, um, except for hard feelings. Uh but okay, so it's like, okay, I'll get a new motherboard there. It'll be like 80, 80 bucks because I didn't get the bundle yet with the CPU, so I can bundle that with the CPU. Um, so a $120 motherboard can be down to 90 bucks because that's what they do there. You don't get CPU motherboard from anywhere else except for Micro Center because they have, um, I guess, support like that. And also they have, um, also they have that bundle deal, which is actually kind of killer because it can be from 30 bucks all the way to like 50 bucks uh savings if you get the cpu motherboard there so yeah um so yeah we get them we get in there i get a new motherboard i get a fan while i'm at there too because it was open box and i needed the fan anyway um so it's like what the heck um so go home try it out again with the new motherboard Still doesn't work. Oh my goodness. Still doesn't work. I spend like three hours trying to get the motherboard to work. And apparently, no, that still doesn't work. Okay, so I stress out and take a nap. Uh, take another nap. I take like a three-hour nap. Because that's what I do when I get frustrated. I don't cuss or throw anything or break anything or blame people. I just go and take a nap. And naps less than an hour are kind of worthless. Um... It's like, did you even take a nap? Because I feel like I, if I take a nap and it's like half an hour, I wake up feeling stupidly tired. Like, why did I even take a nap? I just got more tired and now I want to take another nap. So most of my naps are two to three hours long because if I'm going to take a nap, I'm going to take a nap. 
It's like if you're going to eat something, eat something. Don't just mindlessly eat something while you're watching TV or something. Anyway. Oh, what else? So that was Saturday. New motherboard doesn't work. Sunday, get home from church, go right over to Micro Center with the CPU, uh, RAM, and motherboard that I just bought. That doesn't work. Put in a bag, hand it to them, so to this one customer service person. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about uh, customer service. One person does not represent the entire store. Got that? One person doesn't represent the entire store. And I really kind of knew that beforehand. Uh, but this kind of, this story solidified that. I'm standing in line and there's old people there. And at in line, you get a lot of time to think. You get a lot of time to think about around the store and what kind of store you're in. Here's one tip from the store. One tip from doing stores or like places in general. You can always tell the quality of the place by the ceiling because nobody ever looks at the ceiling. Think about this. Think about the place. Think about mm, fast food. What's fast food that everybody's been in? Say Wendy's. Wendy's. Think about the last Wendy's you've been into. You know the floor. You can look at the floor. There's generally tile around where the lines are. And there's generally carpet uh, around where the where the seating is. You know that, right? There's a definite line where you can know where the floor is. The balls are typically generic. You can get, you can kind of guess on the balls. And there's generally windows around where the seating area is. You know where the door is. What about the ceiling? You never know this is the ceiling unless you typically look at, unless you specifically look at the ceiling and try to, try to like analyze the ceiling, because most places have like. Like in homes, you have popcorn ceiling, okay? It just it's just enough to hide the bumps and the uh in like irregularities of the ceiling, whatever. Uh most stores, most like department stores, most warehouses don't really have a ceiling. They're just like they put structures up there and whatever. The one place that is an ex an exception to everybody knowing the ceiling of is IKEA. Because uh it's a, it's just everybody knows that how what the ceiling is in IKEA. Um, it's just that weird partial ceiling. It's like a skeleton of a ceiling, so that's like enough to hang the lights. But then there's like you look up and it's all the all the metal that has the anti rust uh sprayed on there all around. Whatever everybody knows that ceiling. You can you can picture IKEA ceiling. Everybody everywhere else, not really. So always look at the quality of the ceiling. I forget what the ceiling of the micro center is. Um, although actually no, uh, around the the horseshoe of the micro center, it's typically a low ceiling and it's typically a little bit darker with the lights shined right on the products. In the middle of it, it's typically really bright everywhere. They have like a billion lights in the middle section, in the middle of the horseshoe, that shine it everywhere. Because um, that's where the most the the cheaper products or the cheaper caliber of products are are in the middle. Uh, as opposed to like the laptops and the monitors and the uh, CPUs and motherboards and whatever, uh, as opposed uh, as opposed to like the laptop bags and the headphones and the the cables and the canned air and whatnot. Number two, I'm standing in the line in uh, the customer service, and I look to my to to my left, and customer service is like right right to the right. Of when you walk in, there's a door. If you picture the horseshoe of Micro Center, and the two, the two ends of the horseshoe are at the front of the store. You walk in, and you walk in right into the, to the right, uh, right side, right end of the horseshoe. Right to the right of that is customer service, and there's a big hallway that leads all the way down and continues on to the shape of horseshoe, and to the direct left of when you walk in. There's a Bose, there's a Bose, uh, I guess, um, kiosk kind of thing, um, setup kind of thing, like you would find in, like, Best Buy. Um, actually a variety of speakers, but Bose just happens to be one of them. And after a lot of minutes of standing in the customer service line, you just kind of ha- let your eyes wander. I look to my left, and Bose has this new product, I guess, with a small speaker. And the slogan, the slogan for that speaker, uh, and I quote, tiny, 
until you turn it on. Unquote. Tiny until you turn it on. Ooh, baby. And I'm 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 standing there laughing. Not not hard. Not like audibly, but just kind of laughing a lot. And my mother comes around and just like she's always curious about what I'm laughing at or what I'm thinking. She's like, "What what are you laughing?" I I can't tell a dick joke to my mom. I can't point out what Bo's doing. I the Bose slogan. I can't tell a dick joke to my mom, okay? I, you, 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 you just can't. It's just something you just don't do. I have to think of something quick from laughing because I'm too hard to be laughing at nothing. I'm too hard to be laughing at people. But then, but then this one lady comes around. Let me tell you about the demo. We'll just set up this next part. The demographic of Micro Center is pretty, is pretty niche, because Micro Center is a pretty niche place. It's a, oh, well, it's kind of a niche place. Everybody has a purpose there or ha- has a place there, but you all have a different place in Micro Center. Um, typically in stores, uh, apart from like grocery stores and generic Target, uh, generic uh stores, general stores, um, so like pretty much everywhere else except for like. Uh, not like specific restaurants. You have three. You have um, you have three types of demographic. You have the people. Let's take Home Depot. Home Depot, for example, you're you're buying paint. Um, let's say you go to the paint salesman. Uh, and what is where are you coming from? There's three types of people. There's the one group who has no idea what's going on. No idea. They don't even know what color to paint their room, or what they're painting. They come in there and they're like, I need paint. I don't know what kind of paint at all. They have no idea what they're doing. Um, and paint salesmen, by the way, are the very best salesmen ever that you will ever find. Micro Center salesmen are up there too, but paint salesmen are some of the best. They will give you the product you need at the price you, you want. And that is time and time again, and they know what they're talking about. Props to pal- uh, Saints pal- Saints Pilsman. <laughs> Um, paint salesman, uh, but let's take it. Paint salesman, one demographic have no idea what you're doing, no idea what you need or what you want. You have to like, they have to draw the information out of you to get you, get you through the product that you need. Then there's a very, that's a very like small sliver of the population. Then there's a big wide chunk. There's like an, let's say about 90%, 90% of the people that come to the paint salesman, know what they know what they're doing uh well not like know what they're doing they know how to i guess they know how to paint uh they know they know what they're they know what they're painting they know what they kind of want uh but they just need someone else to like help them hone in on like a specific type of paint and how much paint they need they can generally figure out like a like a color scheme i guess this is like the general consumer you're probably general consumer of what the what like a paint consumer if you need paint you probably know what you you know what you're painting you estimated about how much you need to paint uh you typically know about what painting is and you're more of a help to the paint salesman than the small silver that has no idea what they're doing um so yeah that's the majority of the population we'll call this the basic people um, because it's the basic population or general. We'll call them general. That's a less less derogatory, I guess. Basic people. I don't know. General population. Then there's a small silver up top, about as big as uh, probably smaller than the no, the, the the unknowns. These are the how do I how do I explain them? Kind of like uh, the quote Ron Swanson gives when he goes in the Home Depot looking for tools to fix Andy and April's house and he goes up to this and the salesman's like do you want any help today and he goes up to him and says I know more than you son or something then only Ron Swanson, Swanson can pull off and not look like a total d-bag um but uh these are people that like know exactly what they're doing they know paint inside and out they know they're pretty much I mean, these are like contractor level people that they know what they're talking about um, for paint. So take that in micro center. 
However, the three parts, the unknowns, the generals, and the know-it-alls, they're pretty much a third each. Like, they're pretty much equal. You get a lot of the unknowns. A lot of them are like, I don't know, the majority of the unknowns are old people, just by the nature of the beast, because it's a new tech, computers are new technology to old people, and then didn't grow up with computers like you or I did, or whatever. Um... To be really old people or just people that know very nothing, close to nothing about technology and computers, they'd much less, they much rather, or they, they equally assume a Chromebook is like a brand new Samsung uh, Ultrabook or even a MacBook. They don't really know the difference between each of them, even if they've used one for about three years. Um, they don't really know the difference um, at all, you know, um, which is fine. Everybody is there at one point in life and they need to learn. Um, and it's just the fact of life. They'd probably rather pay the bills uh, through the mail, through smail, snail mail than through online, which is fine. You do what you do, what's most comfortable to you when you pay your bills. It's as long as you pay them on time, you're good. And correctly. Um, don't underpay your bills. Uh, so, so yeah. The general population is, uh, I guess, um, people, I guess people who, uh, let's say, uh, general population. How to describe the general population? You probably, I'd say probably most kids are general population. Most adults, most uh, working adults are general population. Um, if you can kind of work your way around a computer, uh, not necessarily like debug everything around a computer, but if you can work your way around a computer, um, I would say you're more in the general population. You can install a new web browser if you need to. You can install new programs if you need to. You probably know a few... Sp like a speciality thing on a computer, like let's say photo editing or even uh, or even video editing. Uh, if you get the program on there, you know how it works. Um, you're probably not too picky about how fast the the computer boots up. Um, you don't know what a GPU is. Let's say that. Um, the difference between a, a processor and a CPU. Um, you might think there's a difference. Uh, by the way, there's not. Um, you could probably figure out. You could probably figure out a lot about computers, uh, or what you need to do through a tutorial if the tutorial was good enough. Let's say that. Um, these are the general population that come to the micro center. They come in. They know what they kind of want for a laptop. They know the difference between the i3, i5, and i7. They don't really know what AMD is. Um, is it like a new Intel thing? Is it a different brand? Whatever. That's about another third of the population. Then there's the the top third of the population, the know-it-alls, I guess. Kind of the know-it-alls. There's a spectrum. Uh, I guess that's more... The spectrum is more in terms of how how polite you are to the salesman. In term, Not in terms of how much you know. Uh, more so, I mean, there is a spectrum of how much you know. But which in, how, how do you treat a salesman? Um, and how, what, to what degree, um, I would say I'm in the, definitely in the know-it-alls, but I try to, I try to uncharismatically de detract a salesman, you know, like don't make eye contact, um, say a lot of yeahs, um, don't directly like show off to a salesman. Like I know what I'm doing. Um, be, be polite to a salesman. They're trying to work a job. Um, they're trying to do their job and just like, do you need help? No, I think I'm good. I'm just browsing. That's what I give. Um, even if I need something, until I need something in the cupboard, when it's like, hey, uh, I would like a Raspberry Pi B3 Plus or 3 B Plus. And they're like, sure, I'll unlock the case for you and get you one and set it up front. Okay, good. Uh, so there you go. It wasn't until... So, okay. So Micro Center is kind of a weird place like that. Where you get a lot of the old people who come in with broken laptops. You get the general people who know what their way around. They probably 
could figure some stuff out. And then you got the know-it-alls, I guess. I don't know what they're called, know-it-alls. Um, how about the knowledgeable, I guess? Every place is a knowledgeable set. I'm not very knowledgeable in cars, which I'm trying to be better at this summer. Although I got a bunch of other things going on, uh, plus a job. So it's going slow. But hopefully I can I can be better at cars, I guess, and be less ignorant about how to fix a car. I know how to fix brakes, though. I'm not spending 300 bucks to fix brakes because it's not that hard. Um, so, so, yeah, I get it. So, I'm standing in line and I'm trying to avoid telling my mom a dick joke, even though that's what I'm laughing at. Um, and all of a sudden, this woman of, of the church, church. Uh, tries to go out the outdoor. This old woman of, of the church. church tries to go out the outdoor. She got she has this uh white Valentino bag or whatever the heck it is. It's pretty large or whatever. And she looks at the ground at the at the door. They're automatic doors. She looks to the ground and the door's not opening. Because it's the indoor, and you don't go out the indoor because of security reasons, because there's expensive stuff in Micro Center. You don't go out the indoor. She looks down at the door for like five seconds. Then she looks up at the sensor for like 10 seconds until she realizes that there's no sensor at the other side of the door because it's an indoor and they don't want people going out the indoor you want to go out you go around the, the checkouts and you go through the checkouts shameless or uh, shamefully because you didn't buy something there and you're going through all the people uh screwing through all the people because you didn't buy something which is fine um so this lady she like looks up at the sensor or the lack of a sensor for 10 seconds and she gives a big heavy sigh for about three seconds and then turns around and goes walking aimlessly somewhere else toward the back of the store i don't know if she thought that there was a that there was like an exit door at the back of the store or something i don't know did she look in the back of the store when she drove in i don't know so that's what i laughed at again uh toward and then that that made my mother happy and laugh Anyway, then I go into customer service. I probably spend too much time explaining that. Um, I don't know the type of people you meet in Micro Center. Um, that could be a segment. Um, although, okay, never mind. My turn. Go up to the customer service. Um, with my bag of stuff, I think. Um, CPU motherboard RAM, all in a bag. All that I bought there. The CPU has the extended warranty, although that doesn't matter because you get a at least like 90 days uh return policy that you can just return it for no reason and get your full money's work or worth back whatever uh anyway and they test make sure that everything is still there and you get your money back okay um i'm not returning it i'm just making sure it works i'm doing a motherboard bios update just to just to test it out um although i'm i met up with this i met up with a short little dude um him being short doesn't really matter as much as as much as the fact that he doesn't he didn't comb his hair. He kind of half combed his hair. There's the thing. Either comb your hair all the way, don't comb your hair. Pick one or the other. Just don't do it halfway and then leave the other part of it, other parts of it just kind of shaggy. Anyway, this kid was small. Um he had the glass eye thing, which I hate because it's like you have no soul when you have the glass eye thing. And then and then to make matters matters worse, he had that stupid accent where you would like the wet wall rabbit. Oh well I we can go back to this back to the store and you do different will things and he never actually pronounces R's correctly. It has to be a wet W and he talks like a baby. Oh my goodness You sound stupid. You sound stupid you sound like you don't know what you're talking about. You sound like you never passed second grade. And this kid had to be so stickler about the rules about Micro Center that we didn't actually get anything tested. Even though it was stuff that we specifically bought from that store in less than a week ago. And nothing worked. So, so he says, well, we can send you, we, you can come back to like tomorrow or some other day. And we can, we can do a full diagnosis of your whole system. It's like, oh, 
Because at this point, I'm like, what if my what if it's my power supply? And I don't want to spend more money than I already have on the stupid upgrade. Because I thought I was going to spend about, I estimated about uh, 380 bucks, I think. Uh, I th no, like two, like not even 300 bucks. Um, I thought it was going to be 170 for the CPU. Uh, then 20 for the motherboard. And then about 70 for RAM, which I was a fool for thinking I could get RAM for 70 bucks. Uh, because RAM is about double of what it should be. It's about 100 bucks for 8 gigs instead of 50 gigs. Anyway, they're doing a, uh, investigations on price, price fixing on RAM, though, which is really exciting. Because that means your phone, your phone prices will go down, too, because your phone uses DDR4 also. And also your GPUs go down uh, as well, because for some reason, I don't know. Um, because that was part of the problem with the GPU price fixing also. So now they're under investigation, so that's at the top of the hump. Which means I'm the most unlucky person ever when it comes to buying RAM. Anyway, good thing I'm only getting 8 gigs. So we go to the store. I, so I already spent 100 bucks on RAM. Uh, plus 170 on CPU. Plus another 90 on a motherboard. So I'm already spending way too much on what I thought I would. Which is... Probably what I realistically should have expected from an upgrade. But then he sends me back. Uh, he sends me home. Uh, I guess sends us home. It's like, come back to, come back some other day. And come back with your full system. You can do a full diagnostics for 15 bucks. Tells me 15 bucks. And I'm like, okay. You know what? If it's 15 bucks and it just gets this working, I'll be fine. Because I've already spent over 12 hours just getting... just at home trying to get this working minus the driving time front and back from micro center plus the time it takes uh to get in the micro center or to be in a micro center uh which is no less than half an hour actually there was some other times it was like five minutes because i needed a windows license anyway <sighs> my goodness and this this kid okay so we go home sunday night i get frustrated again i take another nap I think, or did I, did I watch Sherlock? I might have watched Sherlock, or I watched some, I, I watched some movie on my laptop, um, anyway, uh, so that was, that was fine, uh, Monday, I'm at work, I'm at work from 9 to 3, uh, come home, uh, go over to Micro Center with a buddy of mine, because he needs, uh, some other things at Micro Center, like a HDMI switch and HDMI cable, um, just so we could play a Switch at home, uh, which was, uh, very nice for him because he got some open box stuff, uh, that saved him about three bucks each on the stuff, so he spent less than 20 bucks on something that would, probably would have took him, uh, cost him about 30, uh, without open box. So, there we go. Um, he got a win. I turned in my, my tower, um, for diagnostics. Uh, do that, uh, go home. Uh, go home on Monday, uh, Tuesday at work again. I'm at work every, every day of the week, except for weekends, normal Monday through Friday. Um, so there we go. Over 24 hours, I'm pulling weeds. I'm already kind of in a pissed off mood because I, I hate lawn work. Lawn work is the stupidest thing ever. It's, it's so like I put work in just to show off the people that I have nothing else to do better to do with my time. There's not to a certain extent there is, to a certain extent, for lawn work, there's, I mean, don't let your lawn become like a wild forest, make sure it's not a danger, make sure it's not absolutely gross, but like, you don't need to replace the mulch every three years, you don't really, you only need to weed once, you do, you do, ugh, voice crack, you do a mass weeding session in like May, like early May, or even April when the when the rain has come down and easy, weeds are easy to pull. You pull all of them. You do a, a full check of your yard. You pull all the weeds. And then you get minimal weeds the rest of the rest until it snows again. Until you do it again. You never have to weed again. But frick, it has to be end of June. And we're weeding in the heat. I mean, it's it's 7 o'clock. It's okay, it's 7, 8 o'clock. And we're already weeding. Which I hate long work with a passion. Because it's like memorizing digits of pi. 
it's only good to a certain extent. You know 3.14159265358589, I've been a missed digit somewhere. That's all you need to know. That's even excessive what you need to know. Because if you're going to do calculation, if you need to memorize that much, that many digits, you're probably going to have a, a calculator with pi already integrated into the calculator, which you can do much more accurate calculations. Because you're not going to know, oh, what's 3.14159265358589 times 8.3. Uh, squared you're not gonna know you're not gonna do that in your head or on paper you're just not gonna do you're gonna do 3.14159 maybe if you want to if you want to be that specific if you need to go any further you're probably gonna have a calculator or some sort of computer that you can do the calculations for you that probably already has pi uh, on it like integrated into the program that you're gonna use or even the programming language if you need to use that um, so the people, so if you see the nerds like in school or on TV or whatever, it's like, I memorized a hundred digits of pi. Well, good for you, son. You memorized something that you did. You pretty much memorized something pretty much only to show off. Did you know, actually, did you know that NASA, uh, correct me if I'm wrong about the digit number, but NASA for the probes that are all the way out taking pictures of Uranus. Yes, Uranus. Um, they... For their pi number, they only go for like nine digits. That's all the accuracy that they need. Like seriously, all the accuracy that they need for circles or for whatever use they need for pi. They only go to like nine digits. NASA, a space organization of like pure science. Only nine digits of pi. I seriously don't... If that... Seriously, out of millions and millions and millions of miles away... For that accuracy. Seriously. Do you really think you need more than 9 digits of pi. In anything else. There might be some applications. Like. Uh, like. Uh, micro technology. That needs to be so accurate. But at that point you're dealing with atoms. Which are pretty much. Pixels anyway. So you really don't need. That accuracy of pi. Um, Because they're just big blocks kind they're just blocks kind of not really maybe i don't know did you know that nanotechnology like your computer is like so small that it's pretty much atoms atoms thick for a lot of the cpus uh yeah so it's it's gonna be really hard to get it even smaller when the tracings are in your cpu are literally atoms thick anyway that's a long work. That's why I'm pissed off at long work. It's pretty much like memorizing digits of pi. It's only good to show off to other people. But if the other people are smart, they'll say, they spend a lot of time for only showing off to people. They must have nothing else to do with their life. They're boring old lives. Even dressing up good, which is which sometimes only looks uh, only is good for showing off, actually kind of has a purpose because it gives a feel of what you are. Um, it feels like if you're in a business conference, you need to wear a suit because it gives a good, it gives a professional feeling. If you go into a bank and the bank teller is not wearing like a suit, like a, like a tie, like a dress shirt and a tie, you kind of, you're kind of skeptical and you probably don't want to go to that bank because it's like, well, is that bank professional enough? Um, you know, you just get that feeling like, what if the guy, what if the guy, the bank teller you go to, you're cashing in a check, you're cashing in your work check. And he's wearing, he's wearing a shirt, maybe. He's wearing a shirt that says, that's like, not even a, it's like a polo. A dirty polo, generic polo from Kmart. I mean, do you, are you going to trust him with your finances? With your bank account? I don't know. You might, you might, in your head, you might say, yeah. But when you go, actually go to a bank teller and they, they're probably wearing just a polo. Uh, maybe not. Anyway, where am I at? Oh yeah, um, Tuesday. I'm already amped up because I'm already angered up because we're doing lawn work. And I get a call over 24 hours later. He said it'd be less than 24 hours later that I would get this call. Ugh. Nope. Or well, I guess yeah. I get a call from Micro Center saying, "Oh no, everything works except for your RAM. Your RAM is dead." I replaced everything, everything on the computer, 
Actually, technically everything. Everything of the core components. But here's the thing. I first tested the CPU motherboard RAM. Uh, the motherboard didn't work. But then I tested the RAM on Sunday, but that was, or on Saturday morning. But that was with the old motherboard that didn't work. So I was thinking that was just the only component that didn't work. So I go back on Sunday. So when I get my new motherboard on Saturday, I go home. Then it's my RAM that's not working also. But then I'm, I was thinking that was my motherboard. So I did, but I didn't try out the new motherboard with the with uh, the buddy down the streets of RAM. Oh my goodness! Then I go, I go back and it's the RAM. I even replaced the CPU. Like on, I think on on Sunday, I even replaced the CPU to see if that works. Oh my goodness! So I go back, go back to Micro Center on the fourth of July, replace my RAM. I have a the receipt sheet that I have is like a worn piece. It's so thick from going back forth of micro center so many times with returns and then repurchases and then returns and repurchases it's like a war and peace okay then i go home go home test it out it works freaking finally here's the thing the the salesman that i hated the most or the salesman i hated the short dude with the with the with stupid accent um he told me he he told me 15 bucks on Sunday. Go back on Monday. He charges me 40 bucks. He denies the fact that he even spoke to me about diagnostics of your whole system being 15 bucks. He denies that. Then he he says, "Well, I think the price is I think the price is actually 30." Thing is, the price is 30, and of course cute little Ben can't freaking talk up to a salesman saying, "No, yesterday you said 15 bucks." Although, I, I don't think I was going to get anywhere with the salesman either. And I don't want to be a total douche to customer service people. Although, this guy was kind of a big D-bag. So, it's kind of like a trade-off. I didn't want to look horrible in front of the other customer service people. Because I go back to Micro Center way more than I probably should. In fact, I just went back today, like less than three hours ago. Uh, for next part of the story. Maybe, I don't know. It'll be a different time. Then he, he says 30 bucks. Then he's like, you know, let me check in the back. Then he comes back and say, no, it's actually 40 bucks. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm just frustrated right now. I just need to get this working. Or I just needed to get that working back on Monday when that was. So I just paid the 40 bucks. Come back. Fast forward back to Wednesday. And it's like, and I finally get up the courage, like go through a conversation in my head so many times. And it's actually the same, not the same, not the short dude, but the same guy who actually, uh, I returned my CPU and then got my new CPU through, uh, re or repaid, no, what is it, my motherboard? Um, yeah, it was my CPU. I returned my CPU and then, like, just got a new one. Got the same exact one. Um, guy with the sprained wrist, I think, I don't know. Very nice dude, he's cooperative, he's, like, on what, so... Fast forward back to Wednesday, he's like, he's like, can we, is, do we have to pay the diagnostic fee because, um, these are all brand new parts that were purchased in less than a week ago. And he's like, you know what? Sure. I'll just contact my manager. And he's like, the manager comes up and he's like, yeah, just, we'll just give you your 40 bucks for the, all the troubles. Cause you've been here five for five days, the past seven days. Oh man. I was like. Thank the Lord. Oh, man. Go home. It freaking works. So here's the thing. All the customer service people I've met through, most of them, all of them except one, were really nice people, and they really wanted to help me. They actually, their, general, their genuine interest was helping me fix my problem. Except for that one dude who was just... We're going to stick by the rules. We don't care if your problem's fixed. We're just going to stick you by the rules. Or we're just going to stick to the rules and what the, our policies are. <sighs> Makes me think he's a newcomer. Because I was kind of like that uh, uh, selling coke at the state fair. I'm just, I mean, I'm just a middleman. Like, no, I can't give you your two for two cokes for $5 because that's not a thing we do anymore. Also, we don't sell iced tea anymore. Anyway, I was just kind of like, these are our policies, ma'am. I'm sorry. And she's, one, one, one lady was like, you know, I saw 
Some back there at the other Coke booth, they had the two for fifty. You know what? I'm gonna go back there and I'm gonna check the I'm gonna check the deals and then I'm gonna come back because I know for sure that I saw it at that last Coke booth today. They had the two for two for five dollars instead of the three dollars the that the twenty ounce cokes are usually. Anyway. So maybe the guy was a newcomer into the customer service realm of micro center i can't look at that guy with the straight face anymore i can usually look at people in the straight face i i can't with that guy that little short little dude Ugh. it worked it worked for a long time i used the stock cooler even though it was a little bit loud and didn't wasn't as cool it's heck a lot better than the tornado that i had back when i first got my first actually first built my desktop so that's my micro center story for the turn of the month of july and of course there was some other prop there was two problems with the i guess the stock cooler was one of them uh i was gonna re go back to my my new cooler at some point and actually today um i finally got back to using my cooler which is already almost a month actually about actually about half a month um, later. And then uh, and then uh, somehow Windows didn't want to activate with my new hardware, which is understandable. Although it's still not understandable why they still sell it for 100 bucks. Um, I guess they there's not really competition for Windows other than for other than Linux, although Windows has a grip hold in the market because a lot of w programs still run on uh, Windows um that people need like a lot of games like that's the only reason i'm on windows uh is because of a lot of my games actually the arkham series to be specific i mean a lot of my other games work on linux but no these work on all the arkham games only work on windows there's rumors of them coming on on linux until arkham knight fiasco happened and they're like no we're just done with pc ports we're just going to get the windows up and running, actually working, and then we're going to be done. So, unfortunately, those are not on Linux. So, I was stuck with an unactivated version of Windows for, actually, for 10 days until today. Okay, it's over an hour. That's my Micro Center story. Now you all know the pain of getting a component and having it not work. Although, usually it's a lot better. Hopefully that that's only a one-time thing because brand new platform and I'll probably have stuff accrued over my lifetime. Anyway.